Hello students. Today we will see preoperative evaluation in patients with ischemic heart disease that is IHD. The goal the goal the goal is to identify risk of IHD based on risk factors. Second, we should identify severity of heart disease. The severity of IHD will be based on symptoms, physical findings, diagnostic test. Third, determine need for preoperative intervention. The cardiac assessment in IHD depends on history, physical examination and ECG. Now, the evaluation of risk factors. That risk factors are smoking, male sex, hypertension, advanced or increasing age, hypercholesterolemia and family history. Also, history of chest pain, dyspnea, and patient having abnormal ECG. Now, we will see the revised cardiac index. The revised cardiac index consists of high-risk surgery. The high-risk surgery are intraperitoneal, intrathoracic, supraingvinal, vascular procedures. Second, IHD by diagnostic criteria. Third, history of congestive cardiac failure. Fourth, history of CVA, cerebrovascular accident. Fifth, diabetes mellitus requiring insulin. Sixth, creatinine more than two. Each criteria has assigned one point. The revised cardiac risk index score and risk of major cardiac events. When score is zero, the risk of major cardiac event is 0.4 when score is 1 that risk is 1% when score is 2 the risk is 2.4% and when score is more than equal to 3 the risk of major cardiac events will be 5.4% now we will see preoperative laboratory tests these consist of hemoglobin blood creatinine renal function tests the anemia can decrease the effectiveness of blood beta blocker therapy in patients undergoing non cardiac surgery. Therefore, we should rule out anemia. Then, ECG. Now, we will see another investigation that is the assessment of functional capacity that can be assessed by number one cardiac stress test. This is, if result is adequate, that suggests patient's condition is good. Adequate test result is obtained when patient can exercise to at least 85% of target heart rate. The target heart rate can be calculated by target heart rate is equal to 220 minus H. Another investigation is pharmacological stress test. Third dobutamine echocardiography and we should look for ECG abnormalities. They are left ventricular hypertrophy with strain pattern. Another investigation is echocardiography. Echocardiography may be combined with exercise or pharmacological agent. It, it can diagnose wall motion abnormalities. The abnormalities at rest indicate scar tissue from previous infarction. The areas of myocardium that are normal at rest but abnormalities with increased inotropy or chronotrophy will indicate stenotic coronary lesion and limited coronary blood flow. Another investigation is nuclear imaging. It is for to look for perfusion abnormalities at rest. It will suggest prior myocardial infarction. Then we will see the revascularization strategies. There are two strategies. Number one, coronary artery bypass grafting, CABG and percutaneous coronary intervention. Now we will see the AHA 2004 guidelines for CABG surgery. 
दैट इज करोनरी रिवेस्कुलराइजेशन बिफोर नॉन कार्डियक सर्जरी नंबर वन पेशंट विथ स्टेबल अंजाइना हु हैव सिग्निफिकंट लेफ्ट मेन करोनरी आर्टरी स्टिनोसिस सेकेंड पेशंट विथ स्टेबल अंजाइना एंड हु हैव ट्रिपल वेसल डिज थर्ड पेशंट विथ स्टेबल अंजाइना हु हैव टू वेसल डिज विथ सिग्निफिकंट प्रोगसिमल एल ए डी स्टेनोसिस एंड इंजेक्शन फ्रैक्शन इज लेस दैन फिफ्टी पर्सेंट फोर्थ पेशंट विथ हाई रिस्क अनस्टेबल अंजाइना और नॉन एस टी सेगमेंट इलेवेशन मायोकार्डियल इन्फॉक्शन फिफ्थ पेशंट विथ एक्यूट एस टी एलेवेशन मायोकार्डियल इन्फॉक्शन नौ प्री ऑपरेटिव मैनेजमेंट ऑफ मेडिकेशन इन दीज पेशंट्स पेशंट्स आर ऑलरेडी नंबर वन बीटा ब्लॉकर्स पेशंट्स ऑलरेडी टेकिंग बीटा एड्रीनर्जिक ब्लॉकर्स मस्ट कंटिन्यू टेकिंग दीज ड्रग्स विदाउट इंटरप्शन थ्रू आउट द पेरी ऑपरेटिव पीरियड पेशंट्स ऑलरेडी रिसीविंग बीटा एड्रीनर्जिक ब्लॉकर शूड एडजस्ट देअर डोस टू अचीव द हार्ट रेट लेस दैन सेवेंटी बीट्स पर मिनिट इफ एट ऑल पॉसिबल बीटा ब्लॉकर शूड बी initiated at least several days before surgery and titrated to achieve heart rate control without hypotension the caution should be taken in patient with cerebrovascular disease because beta blockers increases ray increases rate of perioperative acute stroke then antihypertensive medications that medication should continue on the day of surgery possible exemptions are patient undergoing procedure with major fluid shift having hypotension because hypotension is dangerous so discontinue acei or arbs before surgery then anti patient if patient is re- receiving antidepressant anxiolytic drugs continue on the day of surgery if patient is receiving thyroid medication continue on the day of surgery then statin statin should be continue continued on the day of surgery then if patient is receiving aspirin selectively continuing aspirin where risk of cardiac event fail to be more than risk of major bleeding at that time you should selectively continue the aspirin for example high grade coronary artery disease or cerebrovascular disease if reversal of platelet inhibition is necessary aspirin must be stopped 3 days prior to surgery then we will see if patient is on drug eluting stent that means don't discontinue aspirin in patient who have drug eluting stent who, until they have completed 12 months of dual antiplatelet therapy unless patient surgeon cardiologist have discussed the risk of discontinuation the same applies for bare metal stent bare metal stent in if patient is having bare metal stent don't discontinue until they have completed one month of dual antiplatelet therapy in general aspirin should be continued in patient with coronary stent regardless of time time since implantation then next is clopidogrel patient having if patient having cataract surgery with topical or general anesthesia don't need to stop clopidogrel if reversal of platelet inhibition is necessary clopidogrel should be stopped for 7 days before surgery don't discontinue clopidogrel in patient with drug eluting stent for 12 months of dual antiplatelet therapy in case of bare metal stent it is one month now we will see about the insulin 
for all patients discontinue all short acting that is regular insulin on the day of surgery unless insulin is administered by continuous pump in patients with type 2 diabetes should take none or up to half of their dose of long acting that is 70 30 preparation insulin on the day of surgery patient with type 1 diabetes should take small amount that is 1/3 of their usual morning long acting insulin long acting insulin dose on the day of surgery patient with an insulin pump should continue their basal rate only then if patient is taking oral hypoglycemic agents discontinue on the day of surgery diuretics should be discontinued on the day of surgery except thiazide group of diuretics diuretics if patient is receiving warfarin discontinue 4 days before surgery except patient having cataract surgery without bulbar block then now we will see coronary stents there are two types of percutaneous coronary intervention number 1 bare metal stent and two is the drug eluting stent these patient require antiplatelet therapy to avoid number 1 restenosis and to avoid acute instant thrombosis now we will see AHA American Heart Association recommendations for patient with recent bare metal stent the recommendations are patient with recent bare metal stent implantation occurring within previous 30 days should absolutely not undergo elective surgery if urgent surgery is needed continue dual antiplatelet therapy that means clopidogrel and aspirin then closely monitor patient for post operative myocardial injury and do serial troponin measurements in such patients next if patient is on drug eluting stent perioperative operative cardiac risk is low if surgery is performed more than 6 months after drug eluting stent cardiologist consultation should be taken elective surgery should not be done up to 1 year if aspirin is contra is continued throughout period operative period clopidogrel should be restarted as soon as possible